you guys. Um, just a bit of encouragement. A couple nights ago, <clears throat> the Lord taught me something that I think is really interesting. Um, it was about how how we respond to the offer of eternal life, to salvation, to the gospel, and then um, when we come to the Lord, how we how we look at ourselves from that point on, what are I, um, you know, how we see our identity, um, and all that. So, basically, the Lord was telling me a couple days ago, um, at night, that we're supposed to be slaves uh, to Him as Master. Um, and we see that phrase in the Bible quite a bit in the New Testament. Um, and in the, in the King James Version of the Bible, and a lot of others, um, the word used is servant. But in the Greek, that's actually bond servant. Um, better translated as slave. And there is a difference. A servant gets pay, and they can walk um, uh, out of work whenever they want. Kind of like a butler, if you think about it. Um, but slaves are different. Slaves don't get pay, and uh, they can't just walk off whenever they want. There's, they're consigned to, to, to service, to the master. So um, it really um, give, it really offers a provocative image when we think about how we're supposed to view ourselves in light of our relationship with Jesus now. Um, basically, what, what, what I'm talking about is that when we come to the Lord, um, we become slaves. So that means we have no name for ourselves anymore. Um, our only identification uh, is the association that we have with Him as our Master. Um, we don't have any say over where we go, or what we do, or what we say, or even how to think, really. Now, um, we just basically serve the Master and do whatever He says, uh, because, well, now He, he we're, we're bound to Him in service, loving, service of love, though, of course, it's not like, a, not like He's a tyrant or we're doing it. Um, um, like unwillingly uh, uh, so I definitely say in light of this that slavery uh, is fun uh, the whole point though is this it's that um, basically when we when we come to the Lord we basically we drop our lives we let, let go of it we abandon it we forsake it because we realize that our lives are futile or vanity they don't make the grade they're filthy rags um, all our works, all our deeds, everything that identified us as us, everything about us, everything that we did, all our own efforts and our own endeavors and all that stuff, all our own human wisdom, that's all garbage. So um, not only that, but um, our lives have been condemned um, because of the sin in them. So the only avenue of escape from judgment is to take on the only life that was that is acceptable in God's sight um, is Jesus. His life itself um, is our lifeline. Uh, it's our safety. It's our it's our um, it's the only way to evade judgment and to be justified before God. It's like we take on that life, and it becomes our identity. We take on the name of Jesus, not in the sense of becoming Jesus, but in the sense. Um, of identifying ourselves by the association we have with Jesus. Um, so we take on that life. And then once we take on that life, we, um, we take on the, the works of that life. We take on Jesus' works. Um, not only that, but we take on his values. We take on uh, his lifestyle. We take on um, everything that he was about him. We forego ourselves for his own life, um, his mission, his cause, his mission statement um, because that is the only life that can possibly justify us before God so that's the only thing that can possibly um, keep us from God's judgment um, preserve us from that day and uh, and and, and um, make us like make us able to just step bold, boldly before the throne of grace and to come before God um, with with forgiveness um, uh, at, at his hand um, that we can receive because 
we now we um, identify and conform to his son who is the perfect model of, um, of, of godliness and that he was the perfect atoning sacrifice for sin <coughs> but he was perfect not only in the sense of <coughs> a sacrifice in the end but also in the way he walked so because he's perfect in the way he walked he's the model that we look to and we conform to in order to identify um, like in order to um, show ourselves as sons of God Jesus was the son of God so now that we're, we're uh, we, we become children of God ourselves um, we are identified we're put in the same category um, with Jesus um, as he was on earth not as the, you know the eternal God himself but I mean in the sense of the authority that he had as a human being and the relationship the, con the connection he had with the father as a human we now have the same thing we're brought into the same inheritance as co-heirs with our Lord so because of that now um, and as proof that we are children of God we walk as the Son of God did um, and we uh, are there, we have no other really um, identifying mark other than Jesus himself we have no other association uh, we have no other name we have no other um, way of life we have no other lifeline we have no other example to walk by so it's all Jesus once we do that we become slaves to that mission statement slaves to that life so um, I just really hope that that uh, sinks in for you guys and I really hope that you'll pray about it and God will bless you the way he blessed me because I can't impart to you the grave seriousness of the revelation that he gave me it has to be God's spirit who makes these words come alive to you and really impacts you the way he impacted me so uh, anyway take that to God in prayer and uh, see what he gives you with that so, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with every one of you